of all the different waves that can combine and give us interesting patterns through, again, simply adding them up by superposition, we're going to look at one case in particular. And that's when you have a harmonic wave of a certain frequency traveling in one direction. And then you have another harmonic wave of the same frequency on the same medium. Therefore, the wavelength is the same and the wave speed is the same. Those are all the same, but in opposite direction. When you do that and add them up point by point at different times, you get this particular pattern. You see in this picture, you have the red wave traveling to the left and the blue wave traveling to the right. And when you add those up, you get what's happening on the black lines. And it actually looks like the oscillation doesn't travel sideways at all. It looks like somehow the waves are standing still. These kind of lobes that open and close and open and close like that. And because it looks like that, we call these or this particular pattern standing waves where you have a particular sine wave which makes these patterns as it bobs up and down, up and down. Now under what situation would you have two waves of the same frequency traveling in opposite direction? Well, you can have a particular string and you shake this up and down, right? Then the wave travels this way. As it hits the other side, it's going to travel back. And as it bounces back and forth, back and forth between these two ends, you're going to get the situation where you have the same frequency coming at opposite direction, giving you the standing wave pattern. But of course, because the string is fixed on the both ends, you can't have any height at the two ends. So only certain pattern fits, and that's what we call modes, these specific patterns that fit. So they're asking for the first three, so let's have these three cases. What we're after is we need to find part of this pattern here that can fit such that the two ends can remain fixed. And the biggest pattern you can make is this one, one of these humps. Then if you want a different pattern, you can go for two humps and then maybe three humps, as long as the ends is held fixed. So as a result, knowing the length of the entire string, you can then figure out how long the wavelength is, because as you can see here, you have one hump, right? But you see that one hump only gets you half the wavelength. And because this is the biggest possible pattern we can make, we call that pattern number one. So we put a little one down here. Then the next one you have pattern number two, which has the length equal to the wavelength because you have two humps. And then now you have three halves of a wavelength. So using that, you can solve for the actual lambda. If the length here is two meters, then this would be four meters, two meters, and 1.33 repeating meters. So we cancel the wavelength part. For the frequency, of course, frequency as you know, is you take your wave speed divided by the wavelength. So correspondingly, we call this frequency number one. And similarly for the other cases, so this is what we call for the first three modes. So this is the first mode, the second mode, and the third mode. And there's another pattern that you can see here is that based on the geometry and the way the two ends has to be constrained, we've resulted in this first frequency and you notice that the second frequency here is exactly the same as twice the first frequency and this is three times the first frequency because this is a repeat of this particular frequency we give it a special name of the fundamental frequency and then these because are multiples of the fundamental we call that the harmonic specifically the second harmonic 
and the third harmonic. There's also the word of overtone, and without crowding this too much, we'll leave that discussion for in class. And then over the grander idea of how you can only have a big response in this particular system for particular frequency is part of this big class of phenomenon we call resonance, where particular system have particular preferred frequency. In this case, the string that is two meters long prefers 12.5 hertz, 25 hertz, and 37.5 hertz. And these frequency at which they respond highly will tell us something about the system. In this case, it tells us something about probably the velocity or the wave speed and also the length of the string. And so you can work all those out backwards to tell you something about the system. And this we exploit in dealing with many, many different types of system. But here we're just introducing you to the idea of how certain system can have a bigger response for a particular frequency and that we call resonance.